I will follow the, the usual uh, procedures of going first to the, <coughs> to the coordinator as well. Jean-Paul, do you wish to take the floor? Merci, madame. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I have no question. I just wanted to welcome the president, presence of our former colleague, the minister, and his clear proposals and uh, clearly illustrating the problems in Malta. We just uh, encourage him to um, carry, on, carry on the policies that he's outlined and, outlined, and we hope that he succeeds. Thank you. Thank you. Elisa. Well, yes, it's a pleasure to see you in these in this, uh, new tasks and responsibilities. And uh, it was really fantastic to listen to uh, your analysis of the practical application of the things you have been working on here before you became a minister. Uh, I think it, it was a very, very interesting presentation that you made. Uh, I would like to refer back to what uh, you said and then the comment by the chair. It is true, uh, we share uh, a same kind of strategy in Portugal uh, because uh, we uh, were not allowed to keep a uh, Portuguese state share, golden share in energy and now we also have uh, a share from the Chinese uh, state but in the two, in the grid and in the distribution, which is so we can compare notes and see how it works. Uh, but I wish all the best to you as I wish to us. Uh, then you, you mentioned uh, uh, some elements that, uh, where you agree and where you disagree with the Commission. And I really would like to underline your concerns, not to uh, to let yourself fall into very short-term uh, strategies and because you know all the semester work, what kind of recommendations do you want to make to us now uh, in our competencies uh, accompanying the implementation of this uh, dialogue between member states and, uh, and commission, particularly in what concerns the ownership and the quality of the measures. And secondly, you didn't refer to banks. We are now working very hard after two-pack, six-pack. We are in the middle of uh, the BRRD single resolution. Uh, we have worked on the single supervision. Uh, we are working on the common fund, uh, some sort of credit facility to the common fund for Eurozone. Do you have any recommendations on this, on this framework as well? Because it would be very interesting to listen from you on, this, on these issues. Thank you. Yeah, well, I thank both uh, Gauzes and Elisa for those uh, kind words. Um, yes, I, I, I uh, definitely um, on the question of the economic semester, we, we have a lot to say. I believe it's a, it is a good, it's a good, uh, what do you want to call it, process, procedure, um, whereby you're more disciplined, you start early, uh, starting with the national reform program, well, you start from the growth survey, but then the national reform program, which we are preparing now, and uh, on, and uh, also with the draft budgetary plan. Well, we had, uh, some problem with the draft budgetary plan. I'm not sure how countries, other countries have fared in this, but I, I, I explained this in council, that we normally budgets are um, most secret when it comes to tax, possible potential tax increase, because there will be speculation. Well, in Malta it happened that we, we, we uploaded the draft budgetary plan announcing that we are going to, to get uh, a number of, of, of uh, you know, a certain revenue from excise taxes. So immediately there were all headlines, cigarettes, alcohol, and so on. And in a matter of a few days, shops were, some shops were dry, you know, and, and, and uh, there was speculation. And this was caused just by announcing that. Now, it, transparency is very important, but 
for, in this case, it, 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 was not as, uh, it was not a positive thing for us. But otherwise, we, you know, the templates we were faced with and filled up, they were very, very, very helpful. Um, however, we're still learning. I mean, th this was a, a, the first experience where min finance ministers were together coordinating their budgets. And we're all pigeonholes, uh, in different pigeonholes, depending on, on the risk uh, and so on. And we, we were learning. And obviously, the feeling in there was that, well, the same feeling I had with Oleren in the beginning, let me do it for some self-respect, but not tell us to do this and this, to tell France or to tell Italy, you know, they are going to do this because they were told by the Commission, is sometimes doesn't help. Uh, politically, obviously, and um, you, you could do it your own way, so long that you do it. This is the important point, that you, what you promise, uh, then you deliver. So there I think we, 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 we uh, have a lot to learn. Um, also, this question of synchronizing with budgets is not yet there. I mean, Ireland uh, announced the budget and, 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 and had it in the Parliament, but not yet approved none of them approved. We uh, somehow had certain restrictions. We had to approve it the day before, although we had discussed this with the Commission. In other words, we took action. We were given the understanding that that falls short of what they would require by a certain percent. And we took action in between the 15th October and the approval of the budget, which was the day before we met, to take action. And in fact, the report um, the statement made at the end of the meeting said clearly Malta had taken effective action, not regarding the excessive deficit procedure, but regarding 2014 uh, budget. Now, re regarding the banking union, that's more difficult. Um, it's difficult because, and it's difficult for everybody, because it's about the future. Um, for us, we would have liked, say, more flexibility but would flexibility help smaller countries or is it bigger countries to, to uh, get off the hook? So these are very, very hard questions. Um, we have uh, a sound banking system and want to maintain it. I, I must say that because when, when you talk about having the right proportions, the capital requirements and so on, there's nothing better than, well, you, nobody would ask for an earthquake to happen, but it happened. So the financial crisis was an earthquake for the world. And for one reason or another, the banks in Malta all stood strong and were not affected and didn't need a bailout. So that is the best test you can have. But obviously nobody would want that to happen ever again in one's lifetime to show that you, this is it. So you have to rely on indicators. And we welcomed them, we calculated, and we found that our, that our banks had ample, uh, could satisfy those requirements, and therefore we, we uh, agreed with them. Um, we, obviously, the, the question of, of the uh, single resolution with backstops created more problems between the Eurogroup and those outside. We're starting uh, experiencing this uh, often that we meet on one day as a Eurogroup, and then we agreed, we have a common, common family and so on, and then you come the following day, it's a bigger group, without the first group not knowing exactly what was agreed in the first day, we're not there, and also they, have, they don't have the ESM as a backstop. So what will they be required, you know? And, and this is creating uh, friction. I, I could say that, that uh, you, you don't have one group in one room agreeing on this. So we have to take it in, into two parts, and that's creating uh, complications. But we do believe in the banking union. We do believe a the single supervisor would help, um, we, because for systemic risks, as we know quite well, we need a network and, and some centralization of monitoring and so on. So. We, um, we don't want to delay, that's for sure. We, we are not those who want to delay. We, we want it. I think the world, the financial markets are expecting it. And at least if we don't um, agree, at least we, we should agree on the plan 
roadmap, whatever you want to call it, that we are taking action, not finding excuses of one or the other. We need a treaty change, so then we'll wait. We don't want that. 